Good afternoon, thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. As we transition from summer to fall, Mother Nature will paint our landscape with an array of colors and eventually the leaves will fall. And perhaps you've heard the expression, leaves are supposed to fall, not people. So if you're someone who has problems with balance or falling, then stay tuned because today's guests can help. Nancy Gell is an associate professor in the Department of Rehabilitation and Movement Science at the University of Vermont. She is an active member of the Falls Free Vermont Coalition and conducts research with Dr. Emily Tarleton related to fall prevention. Tarleton is an assistant professor in the Department of Environmental and Health Sciences at Northern Vermont University Johnson. She's a registered dietitian and her research focuses on the role of nutrition in maintaining independence as we age. Thank you both for being with us. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Fran. Thanks, it's great to be here. So, Nancy, let's start with you about what do we know about the causes of falls? So there are a number of falls, and I mean, uh, causes of falls, and uh, we can think of these in three categories. One is the physical, so weakness or a change in balance or loss of vision. The second is environmental, so uh, things like grab bars and stair, stair railings or uh, poor lighting. Mm -hmm. And then the third category relates to risk taking, so such as rushing to get somewhere or um, inactivity. Right, that rushing to get somewhere. So we, we just saw, and we'll return to the slides about how falls are preventable. So, so let's just, let's talk about those tips. Yes, so on these slides I brought from the National Council on Aging, we have six key strategies that can help people reduce their fall risk. So the first is getting involved in strengthening and balance exercise. The second is having a conversation with your healthcare provider or your uh, primary care doctor about your own personal risk factors that you can address. Mm -hmm. And on the next slide, we have, um, so having a conversation with a pharmacist or again with your doctor about the prescriptions you take to see if any of them have side effects that increase fall risk. Mm. And uh, the fourth one is that all important getting your um, <clears throat> hearing and vision checked every year. So uh, to prevent a problem before uh, it can lead to falls. Sure. And then uh, finally, we have uh, checking the environment. So again, adding stair, stair rails or grab bars and cleaning up those uh, walking pathways of clutter and tripping hazards. <laughs> And the final one is just having a conversation with family members or friends to make it a team effort. So it doesn't all fall on, on you alone to, to prevent a fall. Right, and, and falling isn't just for elders, it's really everybody, it's, it's a bad thing to fall. <laughs> it's, just, it's, exactly. it's just not good. So, so what about resources? What's, what's available to um, help people um, with fall prevention? So I brought uh, three on the, uh, I listed three on the slide. There, there are a lot of resources, but the first one that I listed is the Falls Free Vermont Coalition, which we have a, a website with a lot of information on fall prevention. And we recently started a Facebook group. So I encourage hmm. people to check that out. The Vermont Association of Area Agencies on Aging there are five of them across the state, so I encourage people to check out their local area agency for, for programs that are specific to their community. And then we have the National Council on Aging, which uh, is our main resource for fall prevention um, tips. Terrific, and, and so important because falls can be lethal actually you know falls are really a, a problem with elders so we'll um, so thank you so much Nancy and we'll we'll go to Emily now given her expertise your expertise out Emily how does nutrition affect falls well muscle mass and strength can be maintained by not only paying attention to physical activity but also paying attention to nutrition a low body weight due to malnutrition or not consuming enough food or nutrients can increase fall risk. 
due to similar effects on strength and bone loss as in activity. So it's important to get a variety of foods. So different foods from different food groups, they provide all different nutrients. Picking an assortment within each food group throughout the week will help you get all the nutrients that you need and also make meals more interesting as well. Right, right. It, it sounds like basic nu nutrition advice, actually. But are, are, there, are there recommendations for maintaining specifically healthy bone and muscle, which I would imagine is important for, the, for fall prevention? Yeah, there are a couple nutrients to point out. The first is protein. So it's important to consume an adequate amount of protein um, throughout the day. And unfortunately, we know that about 15% of older adults don't consume the protein needs that are required. Hmm. So when less protein is consumed, muscle breakdown and muscle loss occurs. And muscle growth requires adequate protein, too. So we want to make sure we consume adequate protein. Another, um, a couple other important nutrients um, are vitamin and D and calcium. The calcium stored in bones maintains strength and the vitamin D assists with the absorption of calcium into the bone. And then there's a, a couple others. So getting a variety of foods so to make sure that you include enough vitamin A, C and E, folic acid, vitamin B12. These are all associated with mobility. They're also important for eye health. And so a deficiency can cause vision impairment that can lead to confusion, disorientation, poor balance, which all lead to increased falls risk. Oh, that's so so interesting that 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 there's there's this real true connection between nutrition and falling. And are there are there concerns um, regarding older um, adults and nutrition specifically during this current pandemic environment? Food insecurity is a growing threat during hmm. the pandemic, and this is really important because senior Vermonters living in food insecure homes are more likely to be diabetic, suffer from depression, and have limited daily activities. Prior to the pandemic, about 6% of older Vermonters lived in food insecure households and almost 14,000 received Three Squares Vermont benefits. And we expect these numbers to increase. A recent study projects that food insecurity in all households, not just those um, the seniors, may rise by 50% by the end of 2020. So this is a really important um, aspect of the pandemic that we need to pay attention to. Wow. Um... Absolutely, and, and you brought also along a slide highlighting the resources available to help people learn more about nutrition. Why don't you take us through that slide? Yeah, of course. So we, there are, just like with falls, there are a lot of great resources for um, nutrition. For access to healthy food, there's the Vermont Association of Area Agencies on Aging, which provides information about Meals on Wheels for all the different counties throughout Vermont. There's also the Find a Food Bank, which shows you where um, the food banks throughout Vermont are. And of course, Three Squares Vermont. So older um, adults do have access to Three Squares Vermont. There's a 60 plus program. And if you aren't sure whether you may qualify, I encourage you to reach out to them. A absolutely. It's a very important program and, and people should check in. Um, with that program to see if they are working. So thank you for those excellent resources. And, and another resource actually is a study that is getting underway. Um, tell us um, about that study and, and what's happening there. Yeah, so Dr. Gell and I are both working together on a study that we're looking at falls risk and nutrition risk in older adults throughout Vermont. And we hope that the results of this study help us identify where there is a need for additional community resources for older Vermonters in regards to falls and nutrition and food insecurity as well. So the information is on there. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or would like to participate. Okay, and um, so Emily, you're also giving out your personal um, number and email, I guess. So uh, that's wonderful that people can also just connect with you um, directly. So, so Nancy, there's also a, a, a new program. It's the, the Vermont Research Registry. Um, that might be of interest to um, our, our viewers and uh, maybe, maybe they'll sign up. Nancy? Yes, I am excited that we are in the process of launching the Vermont Research Registry and we're recruiting people age 50 and older who want to participate in research studies. This is a collaboration between UVM and the UVM Center on Aging. 
So I encourage people, if they're interested in research, they can contact me and I can give them more information about how to sign up for the registry. And, and the purpose is really to connect people to uh, research studies that they're eligible for and um, that we would like to have their participation in. Awesome, what a, what a great idea. So that's not studies just for falls, it's for anything for elders. That's right. Okay, fantastic. And, and now I'm, I'm thrilled that we have uh, another, another minute or two. I'd like to go back to Emily about this whole nutrition piece. Um, I'm, I'm so interested that, um, uh, or, or, or Nancy, but you know, what can we really do around nutrition? One, get it, make sure that we're, we're eating enough protein and other things. Calcium is, is interesting because some people say calcium is a good thing, a supplement, and some other people say, well, I, I don't know if a supplement is good. Can you, can you speak to that calcium situation that's been, I found, confusing? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it's important to note that most older adults and adults in general can get all the nutrients they need from foods. But if you aren't sure, you can always talk to your doctor or registered dietitian to find out if you might be missing important nutrients. But calcium is available in lots of different types of food. So we always think about dairy products as being the go-to, and it is, it's a great source. But there's many um, calcium-enriched foods, soy foods, soy beverages now that have adequate amounts of calcium. You can also think about bony fish, <laughs> if you mm. like those. Yeah. That's also um, like sardines. Those are a great um, way to get our calcium too. So we always want to try to get it from food first. And if you think you might be um, a little short, go ahead and talk to your doctor or registered dietitian. Great idea. So definitely talk to your doctor first before even even supplements. But try to try to get it by food. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well. Emily, uh, Emily Tarleton, thank you so much for, for joining us and reminding us that nutrition is absolutely essential for our general health and also for fall prevention. And uh, Nancy Gell, uh, researcher and professor at UVM, thank you for all the research that you do um, and also for your fall prevention work. Very, very important. And we'll all try to get those banisters up and, um, and be healthy and more aware about falling. Thank you both very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Thank you both very much. Um, hopefully people got your very important